Good afternoon, one and all, or alternatively, good evening, good morning, wherever you are in this wide world, um, and whenever you're consuming this, you're on the pink and up. Thank you for your continued support. I'm Paddy Davy. More than welcome to uh, the usual setting at my home. Um, it's Sunday afternoon here in the UK, and it's the day after the afternoon before um, Norwich three, Newcastle United one, Premier League. Norwich are here with a bang. Uh, yeah, it doesn't feel quite real still, um, but obviously we've had a night to sleep on it. We're going to get into the Sunday papers, what some of the national boys make of it. We've obviously covered it chapter and verse, pinkand.com, you know the drill, uh, since the final whistle. Plenty more content on there this morning um, and throughout the day. Uh, just put my verdict up, actually, um, where I tried to sort of process what we saw. Um, for anybody who was lucky enough to be there, as I've written about, because... Uh, yeah, that was a, a phenomenal performance. I don't think that's overstating it. Um, front to back, slightly sour note to let, let the clean sheet go right at the end, but I feel we're splitting hairs a little bit overall. Um, Norwich proved that they have the players and the head coach to pick up points in this league and uh, absolutely fully deserved and probably could have won by a few more, albeit um, anybody seen the highlights, anybody who's there in person... Uh, Newcastle had a great chance. Joe Linton, first half, eight, nine yards out, just got up uh, behind Hanley and a uh, very poor header, and that's at nil nil. So, of course, as always, you know, if they get a the goal there, it's a different game, but uh, they didn't. And uh, thankfully for Norwich, they had the striker who knew where the back of the net was um, and didn't he, uh, didn't he underline what he's all about. So, another three for this man. Straight in. Sun on Sunday. Three Moo Pookie. Loving that. Look at the spread on there. Finn bags a treble to prove his Premier credentials. Some great stats here as well. Um, Daniel Farker, first manager at Norwich to win his opening Premier League game in charge at home since Mike Walker, August 92. Um, 92, bear that in mind because uh, down here, Mr Pookie. Get this right. Eck of a start. First man in a Norwich shirt to score a top flight hat trick since Effen Koku, way back in September 1993. That's how long it's been. Uh, one or two other stats I wanted to bring your attention to. Actually, no, I think we'll just go straight into the game. There's a few more historical stats there, but this stat for me, obviously the main stat is uh, the scoreline, but uh, Mo Leitner, yes, of course, Timu would take the headlines, deservedly so, but. Most passes, 103, Leitner. Most touches, Leitner, 116. And this was out of a total pass completion rate of 600 passes. So, um, yes, Timu Puki was good, but so was Moritz Leitner. Excellent. And so was Todd Cantwell. They were the three standouts for me. Um, but to stress, an overall superb team performance. Uh, in the Sun on Sunday, we've got... Read you a little bit of the copy. This guy is really some... Been special, get that? Timu Puki, a player many Premier League fans may not have known despite tearing up the Championship last season, but they are wising up fast to the Norwich striker's talents after he made it four goals in two top flight games with an exquisite hat trick. 29 year old from Kota in Finland, simply far too hot for the inept Newcastle to handle as his clever movement constantly bamboozled them. Yep, wouldn't disagree with that. And we've got a few little quotes here as well. As I say, a really comprehensive report here in the Sun on Sunday from the man himself. Uh, my daughter will probably play with a match ball. Uh, it will have a special place. Um, my first hat-trick in England, yeah, which caught a few by surprise given the amount of goals he scored in the Championship. But that was his first match ball in Norwich. Uh, colours. Um, the ex-Celtic forward added, it was a good victory, especially after the Liverpool display last week. There are better players in the Championship, but we are play be playing better football and the guys are creating chances. There are better players in the Championship. I'm not sure what that means. Um, does he mean he comes up against better players in the Championship? I don't know. But uh, Well, actually on that theme, um, yeah, that maybe Newcastle at home wasn't quite as tough as some of the games Norwich had in the Championship. The male, which again... Perfect finish. Farker hails his role model, but to read the copy just on that point about maybe they had tougher games last season. 
Mail on Sunday. There would be easier. There would be no easy games in the Premier League, or so Norwich were warned. The Championship winners, having promised to stick to their attacking principles, despite despite the step up in class. How naive we said. Play like you did last season, and you'll be torn apart in this division. Really? Question mark. Try telling that to Puki and Daniel Farker after this stroll against Steve Bruce's hapless Newcastle. Norwich would have come up against stiffer resistance in the second tier. Well, yeah, and also as well, funny enough, yeah, in the Mail on Sunday this. Secondary story, Bruce orders flops in for training. Apparently, they were told to report to Newcastle's training ground today. Supposedly, it was going to be a day off. Um, and that underlines how disappointed Steve Bruce was uh, on that front. Obviously, covered both post-match press conferences and uh, the, the new North East media were quite keen to get a line. Obviously, you know how he felt let down or disappointed or not happy with the lack of desire from Newcastle players. But um, I think he's a bit too too wise and been around the block too often to, to, to sort of come out this early in his tenure and uh, and really throw them under the bus as it were but yeah fundamentally he was less than impressed but um, I wouldn't want to dwell on that too much that's what I've written about uh, in my report I, and Daniel himself touched on it don't focus on Newcastle's performance look at Norwich and if they play to that level they will give every team in the Premier League a real test um, and a flavour yeah in the first half, we were like lightning and thunder. Well, yeah, so many good moves. Yeah, wouldn't disagree with that. Um, yeah, it really was a sight to behold in the first half, orchestrated by Leitner with Cantwell and Tom Tribal to give him his due. Very good in that central three. And then off them, everything seemed to, to flow. You know, the two wide fullbacks bombing on. Barco Steepman, I thought, looked a lot more comfortable in those surroundings than he did at Liverpool. But, you know, ultimately he's playing against probably... Well, he is. Better players at Anfield. So, um, you know, he, he definitely looked the part yesterday. And, and, of course, at the top of the pitch was the main man. Um, more circumspect in the times. Just a little set, uh, piece down here, down, down page piece. Pookie hits three for Norwich, stating the obvious. Um, Daniel Farker has no intention of reining in his side's insistence on playing open, attractive, attacking football. No matter who the opposition a pookie hat trick for the Canaries against the poor Steve Bruce side topped the performance, although a late John Joe Shelby finish exposed City's fallible defence. Um, well, yeah, Grant Hanley didn't cover himself in glory, did he? The way he, uh, he got squared up and then let him back inside, albeit Tim Krull did get a hand to that. Uh, it was noticeable on the highlights, but uh, I think I'd be inclined to forgive him that, given what happened in the preceding 93 minutes was... Uh, well, excellent, really. Every department functioning perfectly. Um, and, of course, that bodes well for, for next weekend, which is uh, Chelsea at Carrow Road. Um, I think they, they're playing today, aren't they, on Sunday. So uh, this is obviously you know prior to whatever they do this afternoon. But, yeah, Frank Lampard gone in there. A little bit like Steve Bruce, still finding his feet. So maybe that is an opportunity for Norwich to maintain this momentum. Um, but I think they have to assume that Chelsea will be considerably tougher than uh, Newcastle. But, you know, to reiterate what Daniel said, if they reach those levels more often than not, then I think we'll be OK. And I think we'll be, as in the Royal Wee. I have to, actually, I'm going to tell you this story. That is a Coventry City pennant, my team, as you probably do know. Uh, Norwich City supporter came up to me in Starbucks by Riverside there uh, just before the game yesterday. Well, about an hour and a half before the game. Um, and said his mate is a Coventry fan and is accusing me of being a traitor, which I, I took very, very poorly. Uh but I suppose if I keep using the Royal Wii, then maybe that is the case. But uh, no, no, they need my support. Norwich, on the other hand, uh, well, they're, they're more than capable of continuing in this vein. Uh, and on that support, on a serious note, how good was that? Car Road yesterday, fantastic. I mean, obviously the team gave them something to to shout about, but, um, you know, Daniel was very clear on Friday when we spoke to Mick Colney that he... Um, he really wanted the fans to play the part and understand, although he did caveat it, that he knew, he said they knew already that this is a different dynamic now. You won't dominate teams, albeit given the way the game panned out yesterday. Then maybe uh, he's not talking specifically about the lower end of the Premier League, but over the entire piece, Carrow Road going to be very difficult on occasion. Um, and just that understanding that they won't dominate as they did, obviously, against Newcastle. But... Um, and the fans needed to buy into that and, and they did yesterday from the off, you know, the... the the atmosphere before the game uh, and then even those difficult moments I felt um, after they didn't quite get the breakthrough they, they play deserved in that first 20-25 minute spell 
fans picked it up again and again early in the second half before Pukki got his second and then his third. Um, so I thought, uh, yeah, spot on. And that just underlines, I guess, what we all know who are a bit closer to it maybe than the, the national media boys, which is that they does feel that sense of uh, oneness, that unity between the players, the coaching staff and the support uh, and obviously all the backroom staff that goes with it. So, um, yeah, it was good. After Liverpool, obviously, yeah, a lot of positives, but ultimately a bit of a sobering result uh, that they did bounce back in the manner they did. And, uh, yeah, a very, very positive afternoon in Norwich's new Premier League adventure. So, um, savour it and uh, let's go again against Chelsea. Thanks for watching. <laughs>